And now we're going to do Mark 4, which is building the channel ring from scratch, but parametrically. So copy and paste that. And we're going to go down to the end just for coherence. And then this is the offset channel ring. There we go. And it is Mark 4. So from there, we can call ring blank, but we need to update the file name. So it just is offset channel ring. Like that. And then let's see what we have. Is anything rendering? No, we're good. All right. So now we can call this information just like we did before, and we should get a generic band ring. No information input. There we go. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add some features before the different function. So we're going to incorporate what's called the union function. Again, union, open and close parentheses, and then close curly brace. And we're going to start adding some components to this band ring before we cut out the interior of the ring, right? Cut out the interior of the ring. And so that'll give us all the same constraints, but allow us to move uh, the flange or the edge of that channel ring. So when we union this, what we want is the same size. We want to add the thickness again. So thickness plus channel thickness. And now it doesn't know what that variable is, so we're going to write that in right before resolution. Channel. Make sure you spell it correctly. Most of the time when you're doing coding, you'll find that because you didn't add one word or you misspelled one word, it's not going to work. And we're just declaring a variable right now, so it's a little bit larger. Now the difference here is it is the same width as the band, and so we may want to have width be its own variable, so we'll just call it channel. Width. And that's not really accurate. I think maybe edge width would be good, but uh, we'll see where we're at. Okay, so now there's a band going through, and so you can decide whether you want a raised band on the outside edge, or we can do a second one uh, on either side of the edge. So we're going to take that, and we're going to copy and paste it. All right, so now we need to translate up and down. Translate. And we're going to have some variables that we can pass it, right? So the width of the ring is going to be the axis that we can rotate, right? So width over 2. And now it's moving to the outer edge. So if we want to do that in the Z axis, width over 2 we're at the upper edge or the lower edge. So again, just figuring out your orientation. View from the right side. Right, so this one here is the plus flange. Okay. And then we're going to take that same information. We're going to put it on the other one. And you can say minus this one is the minus flange, right? And it's mad because it's not commented out. But there we go, we have the same channel ring. And so this allows us to add other options, right? Like if we want to add an offset here, offset. Oh. Apparently that's a new function. We'll say eccentric. Okay. And that'll be a number that we can pass. And we're going to put that into both axes. That's a zero. Okay. And then we need to pass that as a variable. So eccentric will come next. Eccentric. Right, because now the ring is no longer concentric. 
and we haven't passed it a number, so it doesn't know what to do with that information. And we'll say equals two. No, about four. There you go. So now you can see that it's actually very high up, probably too high up. Let's go with 1.8, just so we can keep track of where it is. And now the eccentricity goes beyond the band ring. And so that's something you want to consider when you do this, like how much flange do you want on the edge? But now we have creative control of that flange set. And so that means we can make the ring size uh, bigger anywhere in this module. But we'll say that offset channel ring is full and done. We're going to copy that, comment it out, and then we're going to uncomment, right, which is uh, control D, no, control shift D, there we go. And this is showing the original channel ring. We're going to change that to the offset channel ring. Look at those dimensions. Pure madness. Why? Because it's not getting the same information. So what we need to do is add those new variables, right? Channel thickness was 2. We're going to just change it to 3, because why not? And eccentric was 1.8, and we can change that to 2.5. And there we go. It says unknown variable channel width in ring file. So at some point, channel width is called, and we're not using that yet. So we should define channel width. Channel width is equal to two. Okay. And then that means somewhere in this variable we're one, two, three, four variables in. We need to put a two, comma two. And in theory, everything should function. So the only problem now we're having is that uh, it's just slightly thicker than our extrusion cut. And so we can make this number much greater here. So cut out the interior of the ring, width plus 2, we'll make it width plus 10. Boom, problem solved. And so now the only problem is we have our offset for our gemstone not fitting within our channel. And so we can figure where that's oriented in relative space, right? This is the cutout relative to space. So we rotated 90 degrees in one axis. And let's try 180. Okay. So that's not where we want it. Translating in the wrong axis, that's where it is. So comma zero. Where to go? That's where we are. So the other option is since we've already defined an axis for the offset, we can make sure that our translation is occurring eccentric here. And that solves the problem. Okay. So the hardest part is figuring out where you are in the coordinate system and then going back and getting your gemstone and your flange ring all positioned well. So I would address this little offset, which is in our variable. So uh, what do we call this? Eccentric is 1.8. That is the second to last variable. So we can leave eccentric as 1. And now there's a little bit of banding at the bottom and a lot of bit of banding at the top. And we should have control over the thickness of our band. Right? It no longer needs to be 8. It could be something like 6. That's fine. And uh, we just want to make sure that our gemstone is flush to the surface. So we can actually chase it down to 4. I think 5 is appropriate. Okay. And then we can adjust the band width and thickness as, as we choose. So 5. That's well, getting it close. So where can we adjust our channel thickness? That's variable 3. There we go. 
tolerable. So there you have it. A separate version of the offset channel ring to make an eccentric ring and an eccentric channel.